Christian and I had so much fun making this one happen. It was an adventure to say the least. This one was everything Raw is all about and more. I'm honoured to have been able to sit down and listen to the stories and learnings of Grace and Jacob Weatherly, as they're not much older than I am, but have some incredible wisdom that I seek. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy another episode of Raw with Ollie McNichol. Um, all right, so we're here in Everyday Elite. That's what it is currently called. Yes. Right? Yeah. And tell me about that, man. Um, yeah, so it's my gym, basically. Um, we opened in 2017, so three years ago. Um, yeah, like it's been a huge journey since then. But... Um, I mean, yeah, we first, I don't know, do you want me to like talk about how it came about? Absolutely, or? man. Are you, first of all, are you two, were you in, in business together here or was it like this was your gym, you did PT out of it? Um, me? Grace, yeah. Uh, no, like I just came into the piece and then, yeah, I just happened to be doing PT work, so I just do PT. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I think I started PT in 2015. And, um, like, always had the dream of having my own space. Like, I was just like, oh, like, when I'm older, that'll be so good to, like, have my own space. And then, yeah, like, I met with Tom at a cafe and um, the conversation was, like, what do you want to do with, like, your business? Like, where do you see yourself in the next few years and, like, that kind of thing. And then it was just like, yeah, I've always had this dream, like, have my own space and blah, blah, blah. And, like then i think it was like 2016 was like the year that like i made the decision to like go hard for it like like i can make this happen like let's just do the work and like that was that was a big thing just doing like literally doing the work hard for like a good 12 months like just doing everything i could to like make sure i could make it a reality and then yeah towards the end of 2016 came the part of like looking for buildings and like um sourcing equipment and like things like that and then how old were you then 2016 uh i would have been 21 it's incredible yeah it was like i don't think i never really it never really sunk in that i was that young until like people started saying it to me they're just like yeah you're 21 like how are you doing this but like for me it was like i think because i was so like head down like didn't really think about anything else just like want this so bad which was really good because like obviously opened like this is like my my dream like i got it but then like that that hard like laser focus obviously had some effects elsewhere as well um but yeah then in early 2017 i think it was like um like february or march or something we we opened and then yeah like then like the first three weeks we had like 100 members and then like a couple of months after that we hit 200 and like which is like that's incredible yeah like it, it took off and like i was not expecting it at all like it just it took off so hard and like was that just through word of mouth because i mean social media that wasn't I mean it wasn't that long ago but it definitely wasn't where it is today yeah so how, how did you get the get the word out then I think a, a lot of it was social media for sure yeah. like um, building the excitement on social media was huge like just giving people like little bits and pieces here and there and like posting pictures of like a corner part of the new logo and like just building hype and then yeah obviously being like a small town like word of mouth travels like super quickly here mm. so like um yeah like i think it was definitely a combination of like social media and word of mouth i wouldn't say it was like more of one and the other okay it was pretty balanced yeah yeah it was very balanced for sure but then obviously like when we transitioned to like when we're open for a while social media definitely played like a huge Mm -hmm. a huge part for sure Mm. um and yeah like it's just incredible to like open the doors on the first day and like um, did you have a grand opening yeah i had like a big open day and had like the coffee van and like nice. yeah it was nice. awesome it was a good day it was a really good day yeah yeah, yeah that, so what were the 
you know, effects it, it had on you when you were that age, taking on such a huge responsibility? Because you said it had it had an effect. Yeah. Like it had some... Uh, um, yeah. Like when I was planning out um, and like preparing to open everything and like getting quotes for like equipment and like make sure everything's like set up in terms of like power and like all the other shit you don't think about and then... Um, yeah like I was playing footy at the time as well and like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to like perform and like make sure I was the person that I thought everyone would think that I was in terms of like um, oh he's the new guy that's going to open the gym in Mafra like putting on this like mask of you know I'm great look at me open this look at me open this gym and everything like that and then I took that into footy like got to perform well because I'm the guy that's like opening the gym and then like uh, at work like with my clients and stuff I'm like I have to do well have to get these guys good results because I'm the new guy that's like opening the gym in town and then it come to a point where I was like didn't have enough money to like afford things because I was putting everything into like the gym and then like um, couldn't afford the equipment that I really wanted and then like it was just like just putting myself like under a heap of pressure and then like I was um I came out of a relationship at the time as well which like come down hard and then like again it just come back to like me putting all this pressure on myself because I thought everyone thought that I was like this perfect guy who who's done his done his absolute dream by opening his gym and then like because I had that laser focus that I was talking about um, obviously like my relationship broke down and like relationship with my family like broke down and then um, and I, I asked this because I, I remember the first time I kind of saw who you really were was, was an Instagram live mm. uh, with, with Tom Yep. Um, and I jumped on board and, and saw you there and you were kind of telling your story mm. um, and that, that hit really hard. Yeah. So that's why I asked because, yeah, I, it, it's, it's obviously a, a big journey to go through for someone so young. Mm. Um, but yeah, you were saying that it did get pretty, pretty deep and pretty dark at that, that point in time. Yeah. Um, like, because things just weren't, going the way I planned it to and then um, I just had this belief system that if things are really good then they have to turn to shit and like things were going like fucking incredible and then it just all turned to shit and I just like yeah I, I didn't know really what else to do and I sort of just like because the relationships had broken down with like my family I felt like I couldn't talk to them and I felt like I couldn't talk to like anyone like even like my coach like I felt like I couldn't even say anything to him because I'd failed by getting myself into this position and like it stemmed from just putting all that that pressure on myself and um yeah like pretty much yeah got myself into like this deep dark hole that I didn't think I could get out of um, and yeah like I thought there was only like one um, like one option out of that but yeah that didn't happen thank mm -hmm. god but um, yeah I just didn't have the um, I didn't have the strength to do it like I, I I was like it was right there in like I was ready to go like I was like no nah, that's it like I'm not going to be able to like get myself out of this like how can it possibly get any better than like how can it possibly get better from here yeah like, that's yeah. um and yeah I just didn't have the strength to like go through with it like at all um through was that with that as in continue the the whole business thing or or as in through with that as in 
doing what you were what you were planning on doing yeah doing what i was planning on doing yeah uh like yeah i i I was ready to like just end it like it was a second away Mm -hmm. um and then what what happened like i wasn't committed i literally wasn't committed enough to do it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like the the name of the thing that i was trying to do has it in it and i couldn't even commit to it yeah i didn't i was i i wasn't strong enough to do it that's how weak i was like in that in that moment um do you think it's a sign of weakness because i think that's pretty fucking strong (laughs) yeah at, at the at that point in time i didn't realize that at all for sure um it wasn't until a while maybe a year after that i realized that it wasn't like a point of weakness it was really like a like that was a point of like great strength really and like to get myself out of that situation like like most people don't know the strength that it takes to get out of that situation like people will get themselves in that situation because they think that they're weak and then when they come out the other side like they don't they don't realize how strong of a thing that is to do and like i didn't realize for a long time how strong it was to come out the other side when some people don't um who was around you at that at that point in time not that in that moment but in your life at that that point in time um Like, I definitely had friends that were around, but, like, and family, but, like, I distanced myself from them that much that, like, I wasn't really close with them, I guess. Well, I had the perception that I wasn't close with them, but, like, that was just how I viewed the relationship between us, I guess. And I think it wasn't until after that point that I... um, realized how important like those relationships were really like especially like my family like they freaked out and like yeah and like um like tom like my coach obviously like huge part in like pulling me out not pulling me out of that but helping me like work through it and like like obviously grow from it as well um so you were open about what what you were going to do you you told people soon after or is that a few you know a um, bit further down the track I didn't really like I didn't tell people no um, like I told like a few people um, like my family and coach and like a couple of friends but um, yeah it wasn't really something I openly talked about for a while for a long time um yeah like that instagram live was probably the first one of the first couple of times i'd spoken about it openly for a, to anyone yeah wow. really yeah yeah I for could sure. feel, you could feel it yeah yeah it was it was a new um bringing something to the surface that hadn't hadn't been there for a while you yeah. could feel that yeah mm. thanks so much for that for sharing that though man that's so yeah how then what how'd you come out of that um it was a very long process in terms of like working through that um like yeah like i said tom my coach helped me loads working through that for sure in terms of like changing belief systems and like stuff that i was holding on to and like things like that um and josh one of my close mates was like a huge part in that as well um but it wasn't really until um like a few months before that instagram live that i did with tom that we did like a big like a lot of work around it and like because i was still holding on to it a little bit and like we i was i was working through it but i was working through it and sort of like putting it in my back pocket and not really like addressing it directly and just 
moving past it and just accepting that it like was good for me that that happened so for a long time it was just like cool like let's focus on this let's focus on this and distract myself from actually working on it directly but then when we did address it um like it was just like a huge moment for me in terms of like like we talked about like realizing how much strength it takes to like get past something like that and like how strong of a man I must be to like even work past that because like I like I didn't have the power to die so I must have the power to live and like that was something that just like stuck with me for like as soon as we as soon as I realized that I was like okay like fuck Mm -hmm. that's like that that was that was huge and like I've that's just something that's yeah stuck with me ever since Mm -hmm. I realized that so yeah that was that was big Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a really good way of saying it. Mm. Yeah, wow. And so did business have to stop at that point for a while? Because um, this was amidst starting everything, wasn't it? This yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Um, like everything definitely took a backward step for a little bit there. Um, but then I think that was also part of the distraction as well. Like have to get back on track and like open this gym and like have to make sure that the members are loving the place and have to make sure that the staff are like loving their jobs and like everything like that so that was definitely a big part of the part of the distraction of not addressing it directly initially but um but yeah like business stopped for maybe like two weeks and then it was just like i had to get back on track so like yeah it wasn't yeah it wasn't something that like i stopped for ages to like focus on and get past initially it was just like fuck like i've got so much to do like i can't be thinking about this like let's get this gym open and yeah Mm. yeah and how are you now when when you look back on that now what what goes through your head there's a lot of people that have been there Mm. so what what goes through your head when you think of that now I, i noticed that um that you don't particularly say the word suicide and that, that's mm. that's not something i've ever heard you actually say is yeah. there something about the word that you like to completely keep away from you like is because i noticed that you not at all have mm. have said that which is you know obviously fine but yeah i don't think i have a um problem with it i've just never um like i don't think it's a comfortable I've, yeah it's funny you say i've never really just thinking now like i don't think i've ever said it on any type of video I've done or even in I've said it in content but like obviously that's not me saying it um yeah like I don't think it's comfortable for me to say it sits like there's a lot of emotion still attached to that word for me but in terms of like bad emotion I don't think it's bad it's Mm. more like um like remembering remembering the exact moment I don't think it's very comfortable with me because I've more sat with what I've got out of that moment if anything so like I think that the word suicide like brings me back to like the exact moment whereas like if I'm just talking about like committing the worst type of commitment or something like that it's more I'm focusing on the sort of the growth that I've got out of it Mm. yeah yep makes sense yeah Mm. yeah and how long after did you meet Grace uh we met in like the end of oh well we knew each other from school yeah um but then this relationship blossomed (laughs) at the end of 2018 yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so was Grace at all in, were you at all in the picture through that part of your life? No. Uh, yeah. But you obviously caught up on it all pretty, pretty soon after. Did you, so did you kind of, did you get together after starting here, work or? No, no. no. Um, no. Yeah, like we were already together and then I left my old job and started What was your here. old job? Uh, I was in the Air Force. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. If 
for how long? Three years. Yeah. Yeah. So that was straight out of school. Uh, I took a year off and travelled and did my PT course. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah, I was just joined up for like a gap year mm. to try it because I was still in the stage of, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> um, and yeah, stayed in for three years. Wow, what was that like? I'm very grateful for all the experiences and I'm really glad that I did it, but it was one of the hardest times that like I've been through. Um, I think it brought a lot up. Um, but yeah, like best experience, like it's definitely not what you think it is like. Um, and I was in like an admin job, so it wasn't like really active. Mm. Um, and then I was trying to change my job within the Air Force to like essentially a PT in the Air Force. Um, but then I realized it wasn't what I wanted to do. Like it wasn't in line with me anymore. Um, and it's quite, um, people are very passionate within it as well. So if you want to leave, um, it's often not um, accepted really well. So when that's all you're surrounded with and you want to leave, it's quite challenging to leave unless you are really certain of your decision. So it took me about at least eight months to actually get out after I started wanting to get out. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. Are there, are there a lot of girls? Um, they're doing a lot of work on getting the percentage of females um, up. It, in the job I was in, it's a female dominant role. So I didn't experience like lack of like equality yeah 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 Yeah. okay so there there was still a lot of feminine energy around yeah which I think as well I wasn't used to Mm -hmm. so that in itself like I ended up actually having a really bad experience with a female boss which was the start of really wanting to get out yeah Yeah. what was that can you you tell us (laughs) that experience um she no names obviously yeah um like I mix well with most people like I'm very want to get along never have really had any issues with anyone um but she just came in and did not like get along with her at all she was very like micromanagement and not open to different views at all um the other girl that I worked with was like similar age to me and I feel like In a way, our generation is a bit different as well in the way that we want to know why we're doing things. Um, Whereas the boss was quite old school in the way that we're in the military, like, you just do it. Um, And she came in the role not knowing anything about it and wasn't very accepting that we were more knowledgeable on, like, our job. Um, So that just brought up so much conflict. Um, It got to a point where we, as the, like, lower rank, tried to deal with the conflict with her and she said that it was us like attacking her (laughs) wow like a formal complaint sort of thing like before even trying to put in a formal complaint we wanted to sort it out at the lowest level yeah so we tried to sit down with her and it was us like like because there's two of us and one of her like it was us bullying and like Mm -hmm. um it was an interesting experience like I grew a lot just from that um, like being in a place of such like helplessness that was a big challenge um, and like it was a situation where everyone around you is like yeah that's horrible like I'll help you out and when the time came to support me or us like the other girl I work with everyone would disappear mm. so in a place that's very structured um, in like rank and everything like that it was very challenging and like it got to a point where I was sent to like a psych because they were saying it was just me yeah wow yeah it got extreme for what it was like because I was trying to go against them they sent me to a psych (laughs) yeah um obviously it was just that situation and once I got out of that everyone was just like what the hell like they couldn't believe that it was like that um and yeah then I went to a different job and had a nice experience before I left. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A different job in within the industry. Oh, I just went to like a different location. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the same work. Yeah. 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 And then how long after did you get back into the PT stuff? Because you, so you studied PT before going 
Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, within the Air Force, I was working on changing my job. Um, and I actually got, like, accepted to change my job and went to the training for it and left on the first day. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> because I just couldn't be there. I was just like, wait, like, this is what I've worked for the last nearly two years to get into. And it was really challenging to accept, like, it wasn't what I actually wanted. Like, I feel like a lot of people can relate. You work so hard to be somewhere and then you get there and it's not what you want. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I left the first day of that training and then they posted me down here. There's a base down here because I said I wanted to get out and you have to wait three months before getting out. So I worked there for three months and then got out. Mm. Yeah. So you, you, you said that you saw it, there was a lot of good that came from it. What, mm. What's probably the best thing that you, that you could have take, taken away Ooh. from it? It's <laughs> a good question. I will say like my dedication, like because before it, I didn't have much structure in my life. Um, or anything like that and getting into that and learning how to be <laughs> disciplined in a way um, under someone else was really good to learn how to do it myself and that like being forced to do it yeah yeah mm, yeah that's cool mm. that's an awesome thing to take away from it. <laughs> yeah it's such a good life life uh, skill um, yeah. Isn't it? Mm. yeah yeah um, I mentioned the feminine energy thing before because one of your posts was um, regarding that and how in relationships you struggle to allow that feminine energy to, to come out. Yeah. Where, where are you at with that now? Because that's, that's really interesting. And, and yeah, tell me about that. Um, I still face challenges at times. <laughs> um, that post was actually really beautiful. I, can we like read it? Do you, would you want to read it read or it. should I read it? No, read it. Yeah. You should can I read, read it? it. Yeah. Just know that it's from a female perspective. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. Because I, I thought it was really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, here it is. I say who it is like it took me so long to find it, but I actually saved it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. So, I used to deny the feminine in me. I denied the, the nurturer. I denied the lover. I would deny myself the pleasure of providing and nurturing to suit the modern idea of equality in a heterosexual relationship. It was confusing. I always felt conflicted and didn't know what to do. Now, this may not be the same for everyone. However, it is a common theme I hear among clients and the women around me. I love to cook. I enjoy cleaning and having a nice space to be in. I love to share the foods I create with others and see them enjoying it. But as soon as a male was in the picture, this would go out the window. Why should I cook for him? Would cross my mind. So I'd either just cook for myself, not cook at all, or on a rare occasion I would cook for him. The enjoyment from it would be quickly clouded with thoughts like, when will he cook, f when will he cook for me? Why hasn't he picked up his clothes? I've cooked for him. He should do that. It should be equal. <laughs> Sound familiar? What if you did allow yourself to dive into your feminine you've been denying for so long? What if you allowed yourself to feel the pleasure of providing an, a nourishing meal for your partner? What if you allowed yourself to enjoy cleaning up the space you live in and having it as a beautiful sanctuary for you, the two of you? It is in you to nurture. It is in you to love. What if you finally allowed yourself to truly do so? Now, I read that and... I can relate so much on you know the, the other side mm. as as a as a male the the whole masculine energy thing mm. that's that's something that I've struggled to allow openly for a long time. This was a, a big part of the the work I did with Tom um, and that's why I said being around a group of females mm. was really helpful because yeah. I could that kind of like it was heightened um, <laughs> and it felt that way. Mm. Um, but yeah tell me about that then and wh where's it at now yeah it's so different hearing it be read <laughs> you write really really well thank you really really well yeah I write a lot better when it's yeah from my heart for sure mm. um, yeah like still have challenges definitely because obviously it's been my life for the last 23 years 
Um, but I think the part when I started denying it was because I grew up with my brother and my dad being the main people around me. So there's a lot of masculine energy and don't talk about your emotions and <laughs> everything like that. Um, and then obviously a lot of what you read about is like, oh, you shouldn't. And what you hear is like, oh, a woman shouldn't have to cook for a man. <laughs> mm. Like it's so common. Um, and yeah, I suppose I took that on and in past relationships, I just faced so many challenges with it. Just being so unhappy because I was denying myself enjoyment when I would cook, um, even though it was something I loved. And it was just so confusing because I'd be like, I love doing this. But then like, if I cook for him, I'd be like, no. Oh. <laughs> 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 and so, yeah, like um, it got to a point where there were a lot of other aspects. We got to a point um, before Jacob and I met that I just didn't want to be with anyone because I was like, it's easy on my own. Um, I enjoy being on my own better. There were a lot of other excuses I came up with, but I feel like that was the core aspect because I just couldn't be happy in a relationship because it was so confusing. Um, and yeah, being with Jacob, I've done a lot of work around it. Um, and yeah, talked with Tom about it. And he just said, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, you like it's literally within you to do that and like he raised with me how much of a like nurturing person I am which is something I could never see before um so (laughs) it has been really interesting being more open to it and like allowing myself to cook for Jacob and enjoy it and yeah it's so much nicer to not have to be so conflicted within myself every single day mm, it's probably good for jacob as well he's probably enjoying that oh the food's great the delicious <laughs> foods <laughs> yeah he just scoffs it down but now i'm okay with that <laughs> yeah. as long as he cleans his room or? <laughs> he still doesn't do that <laughs> <laughs> and now you're empowering women yeah that's yeah that's a pretty wicked change yeah um I want to know about that. So I was doing a bit of a stalk. <laughs> Tell me about, so now correct me if I'm wrong in pronunciation, but the Mariposa effect. Yeah, that's right. Tell me about that. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so much to my surprise, I'm working with women. Like I've had a lot of challenges with being friends with women and everything like that. Um, the usual, I get along better with males. Um, and never saw myself just working with women because I was scared of that exact thing. Um, and then, yeah, through the work with Tom, I did a lot of work around, um, obviously I went to transform our, like for business and it was mostly personal for me. Um, so, cause when I was 13, my mom commit suicide. Um, and that was something I didn't deal with until last year um which is understandable as a young girl I just shut off it was the only way I could get through and then I yeah went to the transformer and did a lot of work with Tom around that and that's when it came up because I was just having so many challenges with creating my program and it came up because I really it was because I was scared I couldn't help people because I couldn't help my mum and that was the whole reason why it took me so long to get into coaching really because I was like well I couldn't help my mom how could I help anyone um and yeah did a lot of work around that and then like what like of course I would work with women like whatever it ended up exactly being it didn't really matter but I just wanted to help women like realize who they are and be more clear on the direction they want in life because I feel like so many people, so many people I talk to that's in their like 50s and 60s and they're like, yeah, I didn't figure it out until I was 40 or they still are figuring it out. And obviously for some people that's what it's like, but mm. with the, if you have the guidance and actually see someone that you can talk to and get a bit clear on that, then why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and Mariposa is actually butterfly in Spanish. Um, very nice yeah Yeah, and that's connected to Mm mum so essentially I started the program like from everything that happened with mum and uh, how far I've come because of that Mm -hmm. which part of butterfly 
is is related to mum? Um, well, she had a butterfly tattoo and like butterflies were always a big thing. Um, but I did a it's like cutting of the cord with Tom and she like essentially turned into a purple butterfly, mm. which is how my logo came about as well, which is a purple butterfly. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't actually like spoken about that yet. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah. So the Mariposa <laughs> effect <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm currently working on like my niche for it. Um, it's essentially a program for women that's around fitness, um, like eating wise. Like I really want to give women the tools and information so they can do it themselves. Um, I don't want them to need to rely on me or anything like that. I want to be there and give them the information and tools that they need and guide them whether it is on training um, or if it's something in their personal life. Um, yeah, just guide them and mm. ideally get clear on well learn to love training that's a big one um so many uh females at my age are either training for looks which is a big thing um or training to cover things up and punish themselves and yeah a lot of it they do it but they don't love it um and that was a challenge i faced too so yeah helping women love training um get clear on who they are and really connect to themselves mm -hmm. um, and yeah get a bit more direction in life in general and mm -hmm. actually do it yeah yeah that's awesome I'm so excited to see what comes of that that's yeah. really cool how long has that been in in the works for uh, well I first like launched it in September or mm. October oh, August I think last year yeah and from there, it's been, yeah, the adventure of figuring out, working for myself um, and figuring out exactly what I want to do with it and everything like that. Mm. That's incredible. Mm. What a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Jacob, you're pretty much targeting males then. Yes, um, I am. <laughs> so that's, that's come about. Um, I did make it through the, f the four pillars of strength that you sent me. Nice. Wicked, man. Like it. Um, so that focuses on, focuses on the... So tell us the four pillars. Uh, so the four pillars was something I released as uh, sort of like a guide for men. Um, like my whole thing with men now is like trying to like open them up to going beyond just physical strength which is why i created the four pillars so four pillars basically has uh sections about physical strength mental strength emotional strength and spiritual strength so the four planes basically um and it's it's a guide to sort of open men to sort of like thinking about the other three planes and not just focusing on the physical so like a lot of men will sort of define strength as like how much weight you can lift or how quickly you can scull a beer or like whatever it is, right? Mm. But really, like that's not strength at all. Like, oh. yeah, no, <laughs> like I'm um, amazing, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> you wouldn't pick it. <laughs> so, um, and like it's really based off a lot of the work that I did myself. Like mm. I 100% base strength around exactly that. Like I would just train to like lift as much weight as I could. And I'm like, cool, like I'm now strong. Yeah. And then like, how much more weight can I lift? That'll make me strong. And then like looking at like power lifters and I'm just like, oh, they're strong. Like that's a strong dude. But then like really it's, it, it's just one aspect of strength. And like for, for males, especially like in terms of, you know, becoming uh, um, like a real, like not a, not a real man, like a true, a true strong, a truly strong man, 100% takes all four planes and like a, a balance across all four planes for sure. So yeah, that was basically why I created the four pillars of strength. I'm just like, men need to, men need to hear this. They need to like know that strength isn't just based off the physical. Like there's, a, there's so much more to strength that we don't even know yet. So yeah, I just created that and I was just like, I want, I want men to know this. That's so freaking awesome that your journey from where you were 
has br- like given you this that is so cool yeah that's amazing man yeah amazing um so for each can you give us like a, a like a brief rundown of each of the pillars like yeah I, I guess what what you um how you go about uh teaching each uh part of each pillar yep so the the physical pillar is all based around like how you would define like your physical strength so i know for for myself it was obviously based around how much weight i could lift so i mean a lot of the physical pillar is based around like programming and like you know how to actually get strong in the gym and things like that and how you would define strength for yourself because i know like you watch a marathon runner run a full marathon and you're like oh they're a strong runner like but you see a power lifter deadlift 350 plus kilos and you're like oh that's a strong dude so the physical pillar is basically uh how you can figure out how you define strength for yourself mm. so can like obviously like uh both ends of the spectrum is like marathon runner and power lifter completely different strength but definitely both like strong like athletes within themselves in both mm. their fields so physical pillar is definitely defining strength how you would define it and then uh mental strength is basically like teaching them how they can like overcome challenges that pop up in their life and just knowing that like anything that they anything they've done in their life has brought them to where they are right now and like anything that they've done or whatever has brought them to like that point so um the mental pillar is definitely like teaching them how to just accept that whatever's happening for them is happening for them not to them and just like trying to like uh move them away from that victim mentality and sort of moving them into like the hero mentality and realizing that yeah everything is happening for them it's there's some sort of lesson there in whatever situation they're in uh and then the emotional pillar um i think that was one of the longest um videos in the four pillars i think it was I went a lot deeper than what I intended to, but like it would be hard to keep that short. Yeah. Like, but it needed to happen. I think like, um, and it's basically just like that whole pillar is just helping men become aware that like they're allowed to like fucking have emotions. Like doesn't matter if you get angry. It doesn't matter if you get sad. Like we don't like this whole perception around men needing to like, like a man bottles his shit up and like doesn't talk about like, shit that makes him sad like isn't it crazy and we were like taught as a kid like oh come on be a man you know like get get your shit together yeah exactly like uh that like so it's so outdated that it's almost like a joke now i feel Mm. like it's like in the age that we are now obviously there's a lot more um there's definitely a lot more um like eyes on it now i suppose you could say like in terms of like males need to be aware of that but at the same time, like, none of us fucking know how to do it. Like, no no guys know how to, like, talk about their emotions. So, like, the emotional pillar definitely, like, sort of, it, it dives into how we can actually start, like, talking about our shit and sort of bring, like, just get shit out and stop bottling it up, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the spiritual pillar... Um, was it was an interesting one to film because not many people dive into well i know not many males dive into any sort of spirituality kind of stuff um so filming that was um a challenge in itself to try and not stay like um trying to stay like broad but at the same time like getting deeper with it as well and just realizing that um like you always have the answers to whatever questions you might ask and just like trying to teach them that um sort of like they are who they are for a reason like there's no one there's no one like harping down on you and like criticizing you for every move and things like that like if you if they if they want something go get it the the answer's always going to be there Mm. you did did extremely well to explain that because yeah explaining that to to men is would be a difficult thing yeah because 
it's spiritual, you know, people would hear that and just be like, ah, oh, fairies and stuff. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. But this stuff is for real. This mm. stuff is like, it, it just is. Mm. It's not like magical. Yeah. Um, it, it just is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, no, you explained it really well, much better than I possibly could. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, um, that was really cool. We'll, we'll definitely try to like, we'll get a, I don't know, some sort of, is that uh, the four pillars, uh, those, those short videos open to everyone at the moment? Yeah, like anyone can awesome. jump on um, the links in, my, in the bio of my Instagram. So cool. anyone can jump on and download it and look at it for sure. Yeah, awesome, man. And people who want to continue doing work with you on that. Um, so what more do you provide? Uh, so I have a program called The Journey of Strength, which is... Uh, it's nothing like the four pillars, but at the same time, it's everything in the four pillars, but deep dived on everything that I talk Mm. about basically. Um, And it's like we spoke about just like taking men on that journey to being a truly strong man, like covering everything from like physical strength, mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength, and like embodiment of it all. Like it's basically like a big how to I guess you could say like Mm -hmm. because yeah like I said like guys know about this shit like men know about this stuff they just don't know how the fuck to do it like guys don't know how to talk about their emotions or anything like that and like I I don't know the percentages of the population but you see men in the gym and all they do is bicep curls like oh if I have huge biceps and my vein sticks out that must make me strong Mm. but that's not the case so yeah so t- teaching them how to do it because we don't I, I haven't seen anything other than from like psychologists and stuff like that to try and like teach men how to like take that step from being like all closed off and feeling like they have no end to talk to to actually realizing how they can actually talk about their stuff and that it, it's fine to like open up and everything like that yeah i like your way of kind of opening up that question how you say what is your perception of, mm. of physical strength that's a really cool way to approach it yeah because then it just gets you thinking like you know even me I, I saw that and I thought what is my what is my perception what is what is my view on, on physical strength yeah it's a cool thing to keep in mind for anyone mm. yeah, for yeah sure. that, was, that was a really good way to put it so you're literally both becoming the highest your highest possible <laughs> selves from a female side <laughs> and a male side yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, d- does that, that much energy can, can clash. You two seem to be probably the bestest friends I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's amazing. I've, I've learned a lot from your relationship like Thank truly you. it's it's a, a beautiful thing to see um and you're so young as well it's incredible good job <laughs> well <done>. thank <laughs> you <laughs> yeah <laughs> do, does that energy ever clash then or do you because when you when you start looking into the things that you you both are sometimes you'll get to a point where i mean i'm sure you've both experienced it you, one of you might be having a really awesome day and it's obviously the highest possible point of positive energy and then the other person might be having a day where Ugh, I'm just not feeling it today. Mm. That's, that's what happens, right? Yeah. 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 And how, how do you go about that? Because that's a big thing in relationships. Yeah. I think initially we, we had a lot of challenges around that initially. Yeah. Like I would get home and I, like you said, I would have had like an awesome day and I would just want to like tell grace all about it so i'd come in the door and i'll be like ah like bah, <laughs> like just talking and like i wouldn't have even known yet that grace might not have had like the highest day that i've had and yeah like that sort of different level of energy i think was a huge challenge at the start mm. one of the big things we learned was a lot if he asked me how my day was first, mm. I'd be like, no, you're going first because he would sit there and like, he'd try and listen, be but like he wasn't listening. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you just go. <laughs> Tell me how your day yeah. was so you can listen to mine when it's done. Yeah. Like, just little stuff like that. Um, mm. And like, we just learned 
quite quickly how to read each other yeah. to know like oh probably shouldn't like not dim ourselves down but just be like considerate of that mm. and just be like can i tell you yeah. <laughs> about this amazing mm. thing that happened today <laughs> yeah for sure yeah, yeah we we did learn very quickly early on mm -mm. for sure like and one of my big things is communication and we know when that breaks down yeah. so quickly and i can read jacob like <laughs> nothing <laughs> and he still tries to not deny it um you're but, pretty good yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do when that communication breaks down um what's I the approach i just keep pushing until <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he talks like if it's from my side and i know he's not talking um i used to be like scared to push and i just would leave it but i knew it would bottle up inside me and bottle up inside him mm. um and once i got yeah that confidence in myself to know that like if i felt something was up to trust it um yeah i just keep pushing and obviously like a loving way mm. but like just be like yeah like we figured out pretty quickly that that's what works like especially if i am not talking about something and grace is pushing like initially i'll be like fuck, fuck off what are you doing mm -hmm. but then i'm like oh mm -hmm. that's why like mm -hmm. i'm not talking about this thing and then yeah obviously the conversation will happen and we'll get past it mm -hmm. yeah and just knowing like each other's different um not standards but what we perceive things to be uh, something up mm. <laughs> that was a big one like i'll be like what's what's up and jacob's like nothing's wrong mm. <laughs> and he will <laughs> i'll know that like something's going on like he's thinking about something a heap or whatever but he's just like nothing's wrong and so to him he's like nothing's wrong so i don't need to talk about anything um but i'll know that something's something's up mm. <laughs> and mm. he would deny it like that's a big thing that like you'll deny yeah. but just me like knowing that I'll be like my changing my language too. at the start, I would say like, what's wrong. So now mm. I know I'll be like, what's up. And if he says nothing's wrong, I'll be like, I didn't ask what's wrong. I said, what's up? <laughs> yeah. 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 Our awareness <laughs> around it has increased impressively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And going the other way from a male perspective, like when you come, or well, when Grace comes home and you've just had a day where you just, you know, you prefer to keep to yourself and all that how yeah how do you go about that because there's there's different ways of approaching it as a in yeah. relationship for sure i think it's very similar in the way that like we approach it like the same way from both ways like so you just if, dig in yeah because <laughs> yeah, like, we're both quite stubborn like yeah. i'm pretty stubborn. she's very stubborn <laughs> like and it's the same thing like i'll i'll have to push to get something out of it but then i know like we're aware like we're in rapport and aware of each other that much that like we know the times to like push hard mm. and then we know when times it's just like cool like she needs 10 minutes mm. like kind of thing like that uh, the awareness around that for us has been like massive i think like yeah. especially when it's like like the roles are reversed or whatever like and i'm like grace is bottling something up and i'm trying to like push at her i'm like hesitant to push because i know what it's like when she pushes to get something out of me and like initially you hate it mm. and you're just like give me some space yeah but you know it's going to benefit them yeah sometimes you need to be just like brutal in yeah. love yeah, yeah. Brutal. right you follow Kerwin ray don't you yes yeah. yeah did you see did you listen to that podcast i forgot her name but um it was actually a couple and they spoke about how important it was to just be pretty much just brutal in mm. love yeah. and like if if one of them is you know in that victim mentality the other one's just like shut the fuck up yeah. like yeah. what oh, is wrong yeah like that. we'll we'll call each other out too mm. like that's like the best thing like yeah. that's what I love because I know I can rely on Jacob to just pull me up whenever mm. I'm I hate it at the time of course because mm. I just want to be the victim <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but he <laughs> it's he, addictive yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he'll he'll be brutal and I'll I'll crack it but then very quickly I'll just be like yeah thank you <laughs> yeah mm, for yeah. sure yeah, something to be said for that, definitely. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful thing when you when your relationships to that point when you you can just be honest and mm -hmm. yeah, brutal with mm. love. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Yep. Sweet. So, what's next for you guys? <laughs> oh my <Wow>. god! <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna make it public? Yeah, we yeah. can make it public. Yeah. Um, All right. So, situation of where we are right now everyday elite and what's coming this year from there for both of you cool individually and together 
Okay. Well, with the gym, with Everyday Elite, we, uh, I sold it. So it's now sold um, to a guy named Jesse who works here as well. Um, and yeah, that all gets handed over on the 1st of February. So very it's huge man <laughs> yeah yeah i never thought that i would ever sell this because it's like my baby and mm-hmm. like grew up from nothing and like yeah i just always thought i'd be the gym owner so yeah it's a huge huge step mm-hmm. for me for, for sure um and yeah obviously now i've got the online stuff so my whole business can run from my laptop basically so um yeah mm-hmm. and how long had you known that you wanted to sell it the gym um was that a very quick process well uh i think in terms of like selling a business it's been a quick process for sure like mm. it all happened pretty quickly um but like in my head i think like in my head i think i sold this business a year ago <laughs> like i just sort of like not lost care, but um, sort of took a step back from going so hard at it, I think would be a good way to describe it. Mm. And then, um, yeah, like I had conversations with Tom, like my coach about, you know, getting a manager in and like doing some travel and like just sort of stepping away from working 75 hours a week. And then... I was having a conversation with Jesse in the staff room and he didn't know that I had plans to sell it or get a manager or anything like that. And then, yeah, we're just having like a normal conversation. And then he's like, yeah, and like in a few years, I want to like think about opening my own place and, you know, potentially getting away from here and that sort of thing. And I was like, oh, do you want this place? And it was like, he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I was like, if you want this one, you can buy it. He's like, you serious? And I'm like, yeah, like if you want to buy it, I'm like, I'll sell it to you. And then that's basically how it happened. Like mm. just that conversation was just like perfect timing. Yeah. Like, how long ago was that? Oh, that would have been like October. Mm. Yeah, October last year. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. it's been a quick process. So mm. um, well, I think it is. I've never sold a business before, yeah. but <laughs> like, I think this is pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, not everyone in their early 20s has, uh, has created and then sold a business. So yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, like it was a huge, like massive step. Like it didn't sort of, it didn't feel real until like the last couple of weeks, I think, like signing contracts and like transferring things over. So, and then, yeah, yesterday felt pretty real as well. So, mm. yeah. 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 Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Do you want me to say it? Or you <laughs> it sounds can, you like can. it was a big day. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we bought a caravan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we bought dream. our first home. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what this year holds for you. Mm. Yeah. 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 Going from spending a couple hours together a week to every, every hour. Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you not spend much time together? Jacob leaves at 4 a.m. and gets home at 8 p.m. Yeah. And then weekends are the main time we would get together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Often, I just, like, those get taken up pretty quick by yeah. catch-ups with people or things we need to do. Yeah, yeah. T- tidying because we're not really home that much in the week. Yeah, so... Yeah. And obviously, we try and focus on our health and good sleep. And mm. yeah. so, he gets home at eight and it's a rush to yeah. say hello, run down of the day and get enough sleep in. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that yeah. little bit of time, like alone time that is also really yeah. Yeah, yeah. valuable. Yeah. yeah. So, that exactly. has been a challenge for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely. So, this is going to be an incredible change. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere in particular that you that you have? you Do you have travel plans yet? Uh all like of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Like, because we'll both be working online, like mm-hmm. we can take it anyway. So it's not like we have a time limit. Mm. It's not like we have to rush. It's more so going to be a, where do we want to go next? Let's check this place out. How long Maybe, do we want to stay yeah. here for? <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We'll stay another week, another month. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> That's awesome. So excited. Yeah. Yeah. And other than that, any, anything else like, 
in a in a personal aspect, individual aspect that you that you've been wanting to work on? Um, like, or are these kind of your these are your projects at the moment, and this is what you? This is definitely our focus at the moment. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. Like, business and life connect so much for us. So, mm. yeah, like, I would just be continuing working on my business, running like more workshops and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Just building that up for me for sure. Mm. Yeah. I think workshops and events are definitely the next step mm. for us for nice. sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I could see that. Mm. Could you ever see yourself doing that sort of thing together? <laughs> Absolutely. Up on stage together. That would be mm. yep. epic. <laughs> yeah. Like we've talked a lot, like before I even, when I was first starting to plan out my business to launch it and stuff, I was like, how sick would it be to do a couple's like retreat, retreat. Yeah. Mm. and not mm. like a get to go chill out retreat like we would work on them separately yeah. together swap it so they could get like the males could get the feminine side and different points of view like mm. it needs to happen yeah yeah, yeah i'll be there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really good yeah. yeah yeah um i wanted to say as well going back to f- being a female and not being able to be so in touch with that feminine side it's such a shame that um we've we've been we've been told that females just can't be you know what they naturally are isn't it a shame that it's like taboo to you know a female cooking dinner getting all this stuff Mm. like happening at home and and cleaning and stuff not that it's that's their sole priority Mm. but what a shame that that's like taboo now that's something that you could yeah this is going to be huge (laughs) because yeah yeah like everyone i hear it from like my friends come to me and like clients and they it comes up and they're just like yeah like i don't want to cook for him blah 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 because he should do the same thing Mm -hmm. and i'm just like and i tell them the same thing i'm like look i get it like it's what you've learned but just know that you're just denying yourself pleasure Mm. like (laughs) yeah Mm. and then they'll be like yeah i did this for him once and i'm like yeah how did it feel and they're like good yeah. i'm like i know yeah <laughs> and it, yeah it is so sad like yeah 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 christian and i were talking about that on the way well kind of kind of everything revolved around that like everything traces back to being in a tribe yeah and what were those roles in that tribe yeah everyone knows you can think back to like you know the, the days like a like tribal days and you everyone knows that you know it would be the male out hunting or you know mm. that sort of thing and and the women would be would be cooking cleaning like that that sort of thing yeah mm. everyone knows that that's how it was and yeah it's it's a very very interesting thing it's kind mm. of it's taboo now it's it's a shame yeah mm. and the other aspect from the like female side is how women so often compete and compare well, rather than connect mm. like, yeah and that's what like they would do they'd connect and be together and go through things together and now Mm. it's like they're against each other yeah and themselves yeah Mm. yeah like let yourself be what you want to be yeah it's like forcing yourself out of yeah Mm. that's so interesting yeah so that's that's awesome that you're doing that and you've seen you've come from not wanting to be feminine whatsoever so yeah that's incredible who better to teach it than you that's awesome yeah yeah did you guys have anything you wanted to throw out there or? Um, I don't know. You mentioned earlier that you had things oh. that you wanted to say. Was oh, there anything I, particular? Oh, like I just want to ask you so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an open book. <laughs> I, just don't, I don't really have that, that opportunity as much because it's not about me. But yeah. I'm an open book. <laughs> I like we started off in primary school where we knew each other there and then went to high school together and I had a mad crush on Jacob <laughs> but like <laughs> we were just <laughs> we were just like really good friends um like we connected so well and I know in high school things are quite um surface level but our conversations mm. were always so deep yeah and I was always there for him and he was always there for me um, whether like he had girlfriends or I had a boyfriend and we just always have such deep conversations and well I don't know about you but I always like wanted something more but obviously it didn't happen for a reason because 
we both had a lot of growing to do and a lot to experience. Yeah, mm, um, for sure. And yeah, like after school, high school, like went our separate ways for like five years, didn't talk, didn't yeah. anything. Wow. Um, mm. And then by chance I came home um, after getting out of a long relationship, like nearly a year before. And then, yeah, we connected again and it went from there. It was like nothing had changed. Like we, yeah. we connected straight away again. and mm. It was nice. Yeah. Mm. Misty played a big part in it too. Yeah, <laughs> that's always the way. I think. Yeah. yeah, that's that definitely helps. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah like, sure. Come for a walk with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> try to play it cool. <laughs> Misty, so you've got Misty, who is a golden retriever. Yeah, mm. and Chance. Yeah, so I adopted Greyhound. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, how long have you had both of them? Uh, I've had Misty since she was a puppy, and she's two. Mm. So yeah, a bit over two years. Yeah, and we got Chance in November. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Made me so happy when I saw that, because I think I saw like when you got yeah. Um, it's a her, isn't it? Him. Him. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we got him like the week before the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even bigger than the the marriage yeah. itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. We have to uh, hold ourselves back from getting more so dogs. So many puppies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they're both gonna be with you on the travels. Mm. Yep. Mm. Get yep. their own bed and everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 They get along super well though, don't they? Yeah, they're they both do. really chill. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like just sleep so much and Yeah. Are really good with just walking with us and Yeah. Mm. yeah. And they're like they're so good with people too. Mm. Mm. Like you saw like Misty just loves any sort of like human contact. Yeah. She just she will sit right at your feet and get patted all day if you just sat there. And chances so like beautiful. Chance is like fine around people as well. Mm. He's like a four-year-old child. Yeah. He's like, hi, oh, you haven't really got anything for me. I'll just go now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, are they allowed in here? And if so, why are they not here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, well, Misty freaks out out here. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because there's ghosts. Yeah. Uh, and they know. <laughs> Dogs know. Dogs know. They yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then Chance, we actually haven't really had him down here. Yeah. They probably just run so much of a muck over the cords and oh, Misty would whack her so tail amazing. on the table. Yeah. Uh. She'd get really excited and just, yeah. her, her, she has no idea where her tail is ever. <laughs> <laughs> you saw her run her head into the TV. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, we'll definitely have to be doing another one in the future. Yeah. I'll, I'll come, uh, we'll record in the caravan. Yeah, yeah, we'll come. We'll yeah. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll come, come to, to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez, yeah. For sure. Definitely, like an updated one. Yeah, mm. like that if you got space cool. for the caravan in your backyard, like we can just we can just camp right yep. there. Yeah, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yep, now that would be incredible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So where were we? What uh, did is that all? What did you guys want to throw out there? Um. Did you have any like questions for me? Um, <laughs> it's all good if not. <laughs> this is Wait, all, from this what you said before, like, are you, do you have a partner now? I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's you nice. said that um, you could learn or you have learned a lot from our relationship. Mm-hmm. What's probably the biggest thing you've learned from our relationship so far? Not holding anything back. It's just all out there in the open and um yeah for some for some people I've found it's hard even in relationships to even eye contact mm. and long eye contact mm. which which I've learned is something really powerful <laughs> and I I I feel like you guys have have really delved into that and Letting yourselves kind of embrace that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. You have? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That was like one of the first things we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like on the beach. Um, was that New Year's Eve? I can't remember where that was. We were at the beach somewhere. And I was telling you about this eye thing. Oh, yeah. Um, you might have done it at Transformer where you stand facing someone and you look into their like right eye. Or their, uh, yeah, their right eye, and uh, 
God, I've hit the stomach. Because I'm looking at your, I, I'm looking at your right eye. It feels more most natural. Yeah. So it's. I mean, really sorry. I'm looking at your left <laughs> eye. <laughs> Which way is it? Is it? <laughs> It'd be, are you looking at this one? Yeah, I'm looking at that one. Okay. Yeah, so you <laughs> would look at this one. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We, uh, did you do this at Transformer where you look into their right eye and the first three things you see is like, basically the things that like, uh like you would need to work on or you hold uh, so close to you. So like Grace and I did that. I was like telling her about it at the beach one day and then like we were doing it and I'm like, yeah, it's this thing. And like the first three words are like, come to your head. Like, what do you see? And then we just like didn't do it at all. We just like stared at each other for like 30 seconds at least. Mm -hmm. Like 30 seconds is a long time to like not break eye contact. Mm. and like we we definitely do that a lot now like especially if we're in conversation or anything like that like we I can see that we <laughs> focus on a lot <laughs> what? I've just been staring at your eyes oh, like, really? <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see that back that was perfect <laughs> I didn't even you didn't I notice no? I, I am here guys <laughs> <laughs> um, hey so we've we've mentioned Tom a lot. Mm-hmm. So Tom Clark, you have an extremely strong relationship with him. Absolutely. Um, and we, we've all done work with him. Um, maybe you could explain who he is to you and, and what, he's, <laughs> what he's provided for us. For, for, for us as individuals, obviously. But Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where to start like, to explain mm. like, who he is. It's like he's the most incredible man I've ever met firstly like just incredibly humble as well like yeah like the relationship that's developed between us both has been just amazing I mean we first started as mates in like high school and then that developed into like a business relationship and now he's like my brother like it's just the amount of like support he gives you without doing it for you is just yeah incredible like that's huge isn't it yeah Yeah. and like it's just it's a massive thing for sure like um he like he he empowers you 100 percent for sure and like he's one of the most wisest people i've ever met and i'm sure like you guys can agree like his wisdom is just like beyond anything anyone can even like comprehend especially um and his ability to like help you find the answer is like such a unique skill um and just the way he can like the way he can read you and like the way he can read you without making it look like he or feel like he's um like uh how do i explain it like he can just have a conversation with you, know exactly what's up, but make you realize it without you, without him telling you what it is. Mm. And like for like that, that skill in itself is just incredible because you, you feel you'll learn so much more doing it that way rather than like someone just giving you the answer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we've all done a bit of work with him, but you guys have done a little bit more for a little bit longer. Um, so let, let's go over the, the transformer. Let's just briefly like, so what is it that, that, you know, that, that he's, he's provided there for us. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, well, to put it lightly, he basically changed my life. Like, Within a space of four days. <laughs> well, he gave the pow- you the power to change your life. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, just pushing me more than anyone ever had, like, emotionally, like, to dive into who I am and what's going on. Um, and, yeah, just not taking any bullshit, like, no excuses or just the mask just ripped it right off. Um, and, yeah, just, well, essentially... Um, making like helping me see that like losing mum when I was 13 
was the best thing that could ever happen to me. Um, and to be able to see the beauty in that and like no longer hold the anger like for mum and what she did, but to be able to see her beauty and love again and like help me see beauty and love in my life again. Mm. Yeah. Were you close with your mum? Yeah. 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 Like she was my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. So that obviously has helped me be who I am today massively. Um, And if it hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be here doing what I am now and helping people and changing women's lives. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Tom helped me see that and work through it and yeah, finally start doing what I want to do. So what was your mask? Um, So you said you had had to, he ripped off your, well, you ripped off your mask. What was that mask? What does it look like? It looked like someone who definitely like acted confident but was not um someone that yeah was really tough and didn't need to cry crying was weak and stuff like that um and yeah just acting like I knew like lots and where I wanted to go sort of thing and that I didn't need anyone's help I could do it on my own whereas like I was just the child in me was just dying inside really yeah Hmm. yeah wow so what did you have to what was your relationship with that child inside did you have to let her go did you have to let her know that you're okay now and that you are that she's served her time but it's you're ready to to go and grow as a as a woman Yeah. yeah like i held on to that Like, a lot of it was that I um, didn't want to be a victim. Like, I didn't want people to see me as, like, someone who lost their mum and feel guilty for me. But because I didn't want that so much, it's what exactly I was. And, like, um, I wouldn't tell anyone what happened, like, with mum because I didn't want them to feel bad for me. Um, But it was really, like, I just felt so bad for myself and that little girl that lost her mum. Um... So really accepting her and feeling her pain finally Mm. um, after eight years um, allowed me to then step into the woman I was. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. And yourself, Jacob, what what was like the, the main thing? That you, that you took away from that first sort of experience at something like the Transformer with Tom Clark? Um, mine was like a huge identity shift and how I saw myself for sure. Um, yeah, like I talked about, like putting the pressure on myself to like be that high achiever and like always wanting to like be the best and like be at the top. It's like a lot of the work in that initial transformer was sort of like, yeah, unzipping the suit of high achiever Mm -hmm. and like putting on the suit of me. Yeah. Essentially. Yep. For sure. Because I'd just been, I'd been wearing, I'd been wearing that, like I'd been wearing that mask my whole life. Mm. Always wanted to be at the front and like always wanted to be the strongest and always wanted to be the fittest and the fastest and always wanted to be like, better than any other PTs in the area and have a better gym than everyone else and yeah like a, like it was it was confronting for sure because like that's just what I'd known my whole life and like being okay with just being me was like it was huge in that mm. initial work for sure yeah he's just a wizard really <laughs> <laughs> you're a wizard Harry <laughs> he's a magical man <laughs> how did you meet Tom how did you find out about Tom through Dylan Uh, Um, he came into work like my work one day to stock up on some subs and good on him yeah (laughs) and you know we we just we just talked and and got deep as usual Um, and did you know him oh you knew him already yeah Yeah, I knew Dylan Um, it's Adelaide everyone knows everyone Um, it's like Mafra yeah I bet yeah (laughs) (laughs) um 
I'm apparently friends with the neighbor from here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he ca- he came in, and it was at a point in my life where it was very clear that I was I was playing victim. Um, it was at a point in my life where I I, w- I wasn't. I wasn't hiding the fact that I wasn't loving where I was at that point in time. And he obviously saw that, um, being the, the incredible dude he is and very aware and conscious and, you know, he can feel what you're feeling. Um, so he, he just said out of nowhere, I'm going to get you in contact with, with Tom. Um, I think that you two would, would do really well um, together and I, I feel as though he could really I don't know be of benefit to me yeah. at that point in my life and and yeah then I received a message from Tom like the day day after they're pretty sly with the, <laughs> how they do that aren't they um, no but it, it was it was perfect it was perfect timing um, and yeah Tom and I just got along straight away and I was like yeah what do I have to lose from going to this like um, so yeah, I, I went to the Igniter, which was just in, in Adelaide. Um, and then, uh, and that kind of made me even more aware of what I had that I needed to work on mm. and, and figure out about myself. And it was quite daunting because I wanted, I was in a room of, of business owners and PTs and stuff. So I was kind of a little bit like, I don't belong here. Mm. And I said that to him and I was like, man, I don't know you're asking these questions like for someone who already has their business and kind of knows where they're going in life. I don't know. And yeah, so I don't know how to answer any of these questions. Um, so that was something to, to get over. And then I kind of thought maybe the, the transformer, the, the following, um, the, what would you call that? The summit afterwards yeah. um, may not be for me because I'm not in the same position as these people are, but um, I soon realized that it wasn't about um, business or what I was... Uh, uh, not, not, yeah, even what I was wanting to do, it was about um, who I am right now and, and the person I'm being right now. And then that, getting through that, is what opened me up to this um, and figuring out exactly what it was that I wanted to do. Um, yeah, so that that was my experience, and and that transformed what it was in um, in Melbourne. Mm. Yeah. Have you got any work? Have you got any more work that you would like to do with him, or any intentions to like, sort of do anything else with him at all? So at this point in my life, I he's given me the gift of um, of what exactly what I've created right now, like with the podcast and um, yeah. having the strength to start this um i possibly wouldn't have yet otherwise yeah so he opened that up for me um which i'm going to be just infinitely um forever grateful for uh and and that's just what i needed for now i still obviously love him and and you know i'm sure that we're going to cross paths and do things together in the future but like for now this is exactly what i needed um that was what i needed from him Mm -hmm. and I'm good to work on myself for now. Um, yeah. Until I realize I got a little bit more growing to do in that area or this area. Um, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. We'll, we'll finish up there then. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for doing this and having us here. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm so glad yeah. I finally met you guys yeah. in person. <laughs> um, though it feels like I've known you both for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this has been awesome. So thank you. Mm. You're yeah, welcome. it's been so good. Yeah. Loved awesome. It. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>